Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you what I've learned about OEM batteries compared with aftermarket batteries. It's a rare person anywhere in the world these days who doesn't use batteries for something. All of us who use batteries have been faced with the need to replace those batteries at some time, and that's when we go shopping usually online. This is when we find that if we were to buy a battery made by the original maker called the Original Equipment Manufacturer or OEM, those OEM batteries cost between two and ten times as much as batteries we can get from other sources. Some people see those lower prices and they jump on them saying, Gee, why should I pay $130 for an original Dell laptop battery when I can get one online for only $47? Other people, like me, ask, Why the big price difference? What's the difference between OEM batteries and aftermarket batteries? After all, original equipment manufacturers, they want to make their product as low a price as possible so they'll be able to sell more of them. So why would they put in the expensive batteries when there are cheaper batteries out there? There's got to be a reason. Let me share with you what I found out. Like all information here on YouTube and the internet, each of you has to make up your own mind and decide for yourself what will work best for you. In this video, my intent is to share with you what I have found out, why I have recently decided that for me, OEM batteries are often the better choice. A quick disclaimer here, I'm talking mostly about batteries for electronic devices. Anything from a cell phone to a digital recorder to a camera or a laptop computer, I'm not talking about general purpose batteries such as AA batteries, AAA batteries, 9 volt batteries, car batteries, anything of that ill except as the same general principles apply. My first in-depth dig into aftermarket batteries came in about 2009 when a friend of mine was frustrated because his Motorola Razor cell phone, remember those? His cell phone wouldn't hold a charge even for a full day. I dug into some online resources and I found out that Motorola OEM batteries, now please forgive me here because my memory is probably not straight on. I've slept since I did this research. Original Motorola OEM batteries would cost about, oh, let's say $28, while aftermarket batteries could cost as low as $4. This was enough of a price discrepancy to make me hugely suspicious. Sure, the aftermarket batteries could have been made in China or India or Bangladesh or somewhere they only have to pay their workers pennies a day, no health insurance, no retirement plans, no vacations, but there were still materials to buy, manufacturing equipment to build, packaging to install, and shipping halfway around the world. It just didn't make sense to me. So I started digging into what I could find out about customer experiences with these aftermarket batteries. This ability to dig into customer experiences is, for me, one of the most stupendous benefits of shopping on Amazon. If you're diligent, you can read what other real customers say about this product you're considering buying. I know that most of the reviews posted on Amazon are by real people because I have posted more than 200 reviews myself, ranging from glowingly positive through mediocre to horrible pans of the various products, and as near as I can tell, every single one of the reviews I've written is still up today. Here's a side note of caution about Amazon reviews. Because they allow pretty much any customer to post anything they want within their guidelines, there's nothing to prevent an Amazon vendor from getting all his best buddies to post rave reviews about his product, and there's really no way to tell which reviews are genuine and which are specious. Well, not exactly no way, but you have to be careful. Here's how I do it. First, I look at the number of reviews. The more they have, the more credibility I put in them. A product that only has seven reviews and every single one is five star is, to me, quite suspicious. A product that has like 133,000 reviews would seem to me that those reviews and their associated ratings are much more reliable and credible. Second, I look at the content of the reviews. Those reviews that are brief or don't really say anything are, to my mind at least, throwaways. This was a great product. I was looking for just this very thing. These kind of reviews to me are throwaways. 
However, those reviews that go into great detail about what it is they liked about the product and what they did not like about the product are, to me, much more credible. You'll find a lot of information in these in-depth reviews, and in just a bit, I'll tell you how a recent one helped me not in just making a buying decision, but also in solidifying my conviction about OEM versus aftermarket batteries. Okay, back to the story about the battery replacement for my friend's cell phone. Eventually, I recommended to my friend that he didn't need that $28 OEM battery, but I was enough suspicious of the batteries in the sub $10 range that I advised him to get one that cost about, oh, 15 bucks. He bought that one and it worked great for a while. The problem is that while his OEM battery lasted about a year before it began failing to hold a charge, this new aftermarket battery began to fail after about two months. That is, after only about two months of usage in his Motorola Razor phone, this new battery would not hold a charge for a full day. It was frustrating. I was getting ready to recommend to him that he go ahead, take the plunge, and go for the OEM battery at $28, but he decided to go with an all-new cell phone instead. Fast forward a couple of years to when my own laptop battery began to fail to hold a charge. It had been just fine for maybe four years, but then it began to give out. It got to the point that I had to operate the laptop always plugged in. So I began researching replacement batteries for my computer. And guess what I found? I found the exact same thing I had found with batteries for my friend's cell phone. There were the OEM batteries for about $130 at the time and the aftermarket batteries for about, oh, anywhere from $49 to $75. So guess what? I went with the aftermarket battery, and the same thing happened. While the OEM battery had lasted more than four years, the aftermarket battery began failing to hold a charge after about a year. But because by that time I had become accustomed to operating my computer always plugged in, I barely noticed this, and then my wife's laptop battery began to fail. So she couldn't unplug the computer, go sit on the couch with our daughter, work on a crossword puzzle without her computer dying halfway through. So I started looking into buying a replacement battery for her computer, and guess what I found? The exact same thing one more time. You would think that by now I would have learned, but no, I bet I'm no different than any of you out there right now. Anything that occurs over a period of months or even years tends to escape our notice. It's like eating and diet something that takes literally decades to develop, such as being 50 pounds overweight. Can't be anybody out there watching this that's 50 pounds overweight. Nah, that won't happen. But it couldn't possibly be the result of me overeating at just one meal, right? But I bought a non-OEM battery for my wife's computer, and once again, it didn't last like the OEM battery did. Fast forward to last month. With the worldwide pandemic lockdown just beginning to ease up and pretty much everyone chomping at the bit to get out and do something, my wife got together with our kids' families and planned a week-long family vacation at a great place about halfway between where we all live, which is 600 miles apart. Well, I have a Canon 40D digital SLR that I bought in about 2007, and it takes great pictures. And my wife wanted me to bring it along on the trip so I could get some high quality pictures for the family. So the day before we were to go on the trip, I got it out just to make sure it still worked. And you guessed it, better than a doornail. Since it had been working perfectly when I put it away last, I figured it had to be the battery. So I researched replacement batteries and you guessed it, I found I could get two aftermarket batteries and a charger for $25, while the Canon OEM brand battery costs $53. Remembering my prior experience with other kinds of batteries, I began to do some research, and this is where reading the Amazon reviews in depth paid big dividends. The aftermarket battery I was considering buying had more than 3,000 views, which is very good, and was rated at 4.3 stars, which is also excellent. If that were the only thing I was counting on to make a decision, I would have been done at that point. 
but I also started reading the reviews in more depth, and that is where I struck gold. One reviewer related how he had been using this battery for about eight months now, and after about six months of use, the battery would only last about 24 hours in his camera before needing recharging. His OEM battery that came with the camera lasted four years, and during all that time, the battery would last about a month or more between charges. <sighs> Aha, the light bulb finally came on over my head. I went back and reread the enthusiastic reviews on this aftermarket battery. Well, not all 3,000 of these reviews, but I read probably 100 or more of these reviews, and it became evident to me that the vast majority of these reviews were written after just having received that battery, or at most within a month of having received it. What this means is that none of these people who wrote these very positive reviews had used the battery for long enough to know how long it would last. It was at this point I decided to go with the OEM battery. Just bite the bullet and spend the extra money. The bottom line to all this about OEM batteries versus aftermarket batteries is this. First, the OEM batteries will always cost more, sometimes 10 times more than aftermarket batteries. Second, it is very difficult to determine the quality and longevity of an aftermarket battery because sometimes their weakness is not evident until you've had it for six months or a year or more. Finally, you need to do your research. You need to determine for yourself the reputation of any aftermarket battery you're considering buying. Aftermarket batteries can be good. As a matter of fact, the battery I wound up buying, I bought it at a specialty camera store this gentleman did not have any OEM Canon batteries, but he had this other battery that he recommended. I asked him, well, how does it last? What, ha what is it like after a month or so? What is it like after a year? He says he's been using that brand of battery for five years and has never had any problem with it. So they can be good, but you need to do your research. If you're willing to take a chance on and rely on your own judgment to which one to buy, then go for it. On the other hand, if you want the very best possible guarantee of a battery being reliable and long-lasting, it just might be worth the extra money to buy an OEM battery. So for me, with my experience from aftermarket batteries and OEM batteries, the OEM battery is usually worth the extra money. I hope you found this video helpful and worthy of sharing with people you know who may need to buy replacement batteries. Do you know anybody who doesn't need to buy replacement batteries? Well, share it with everybody then. If so, I'd sure appreciate it if you'd give us a great big old thumbs up, which will also let the YouTube robots know that you found this video helpful and they will recommend it to other people as well. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not a subscriber, why not go ahead right now and click that subscribe button and then the bell icon and YouTube will remind you the next time we post another great tutorial right here on David's Tutorials. a little bit of information about this setup. I'm right now using for the very first time the current setup of my Perry prompter, which is like a teleprompter except it uses an external monitor instead of an iPad. iPad is just too small for me to read with these old guys. And I've been using it now and it seems to be working pretty well, but I've got a pretty I've, to set up here. And if anybody's interested in building a periprompter for yourself, especially if you need a teleprompter but you have an extra monitor sitting around your house, just let me know in the comment section down below that you'd like the instructions on how to build a periprompter and I'll see what I can do about putting up another tutorial video on how to build your own periprompter. In the meantime, take care everybody. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.